Hello my dear and beautiful friends, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you are here. This is a collective pick a card reading. The theme was chosen by my patrons over on Patreon and the theme today is the spiritual lesson you are learning from a particular experience. Now you can choose multiple different experiences and see which pile that you were drawn to or you can focus on just which which one in particular you are drawn to in connection to a particular experience but i would definitely have an experience that you would like some messages guidance clarity around have that in your mind as you look at the piles before making your selection now as always this is a collective reading the energies and the themes and the messages that come through are going to be varied. Not all of them may be for you in your situation. So if it doesn't feel right or resonant, you don't have to take that message and that's okay. You might also be drawn to more than one pile for just one situation and that's also okay. But if you would like something personal, I do offer personal readings and those are available on my stores, on my website and on Etsy. There's only two and they're both linked down below. Please use my official links. I'll never try and sell you products through DMs, WhatsApp, whatever it is. You know, there's a lot of impersonators out there, not just of me, but other people as well. Now, I've got three paths to choose from today. And we're going to be using the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. I was very guided to use this one. And this one also, I haven't actually used in a collective reading yet. This was another gift from one of my lovely patrons. Um, so... I'm excited to get into it. We've got three crystals to choose from if you like choosing the crystals with the energies. So we have the green calcite. We have the rose quartz. And we have the carnelian. So take as long as you need, pause the video if you need, really allow yourself to connect with your own energy, take a deep breath and just see which one is calling to you when you think about the situation that you'd like some guidance, clarity or messages on. I will see you in your readings, the timestamps are all below, I'll see you then. Hi there, pile number one, if you were drawn to these cards and the green calcite then this is your reading. <clears throat> So we're going to be asking for messages on the spiritual lessons you've been learning from this experience or situation that's on your mind right now. Let's get into it. Okay, we've got healing and we've got earth guardian. Stay rooted and grounded. Okay. The messaging that I'm getting from this initially with stay rooted and grounded is and with this healing energy they're both this strong earth energy here and also related to the heart chakra with with the green and earth energy of course sometimes we really have to be the person that grounds ourselves that brings ourselves back down from a difficult ledge from a difficult experience from our minds racing away with us. There is a strong nature earth energy vibe here. I'm getting really strong earth energy and that can relate to the astrological signs um, of Virgo, Capricorn and Taurus. I'm sorry, I stuttered there simply because I've just seen the synchronicity of the staffs here and just how similar they are. Both of them have feathers hanging from them. Um, that's really quite remarkable. I haven't drawn these two out together before, so I'd never have compared them. But both of these indicate healing. They indicate our own growth. They ability. They they are the ability to direct our power and also to connect with the earth in the living moment whilst we're walking around. You know that staff both drives energy into the earth, and it uh, receives energy through the flow back, back into ourselves. So there is this, you could have been through a lot of experiences that have asked you to come to a certain level of 
self-awareness, self-mastery about what works for you in terms of bringing your energy back to self, in terms of how to redirect your focus from racing anxious thoughts. I'm getting a lot of air energy in Gemini in particular. Is this Gemini season at the time of this reading? Um, it's like, how do you quieten the mind when everything feels like it's taking over? So one of your spiritual experience, one of the big spiritual lessons from your current experience could be how to keep yourself calm and grounded when there is chaos around you or when there is challenges. It's how to remain in that strong sense of self, of knowing who you are and being able to be present even when things might not be going your way or not going as anticipated. It's having that faith and belief in all that is beyond the present moment that we're seeing and really just being able to, to bring ourselves back down. That's the only way I can describe it. It's like bringing, bringing ourselves back down from and remembering who we are. And this could have been a really big process for you. This could have really taken, this could be one of the biggest things that you've had to work on within yourself. Um, but it feels like you've come to a point where you are reaching a certain level of mastery here. So that's really powerful. Let's get some tarot for you. As I said before, if you didn't watch the introduction, this is the Dame Darcy tarot. The mermaid, David Darcy, mermaid tarot. So, part number one, spiritual lessons from this experience. Five of Cups, the Tower, the World, Two of Swords, the Knight of Swords. Ooh, look at that. The Queen of Cups too. I love how that Queen of Cups was just hiding at the back there and this is it this is like that that message this is the focus this is what you've been working on this is what you've been doing let me get the bottom of the deck as well yeah the page of swords the page of swords indicates this energy this experience or these experiences and for some of you this could be more like the entire process of your lives in some respect has taught you how to be the observer. To be the observer when things are going on. To not focus so much on the things that haven't gone right that we refuse to acknowledge what is actually still standing. And to recognise sometimes that some things have to leave our lives in order to improve, in order to make way for something new, for something better. I feel like you've been through several rounds of changes that you could have been through repeating cycles and patterns here with the world in the tower moment. And each time there is a major shift or a major change, it brings you closer to, no, not closer, it brings you to a deeper level of self-understanding, of understanding of what is important, of what needs your attention and focus with this Five of Cups. And what actually doesn't? You know, this Two of Swords and the Knight of Swords here. I really feel like you've come away from this almost intense and potentially flighty reactive energy. I say that without judgment. So many of us do this. We see a situation and we immediately go to panic stations or what do I do? You know, we can react impulsively without giving ourselves the time to think. But I feel like this is one of the big things that you have perhaps learned to do is to become the observer of the situation. Is to allow certain things to unfold in front of you, to tune into them, to feel into them and then decide how it is that you're going to move forwards without rushing in and being impulsive. The Queen of Cups, she was hidden behind that Five of Cups. Through your disappointments, you could have really have been asked to tune into your own emotional needs, 
rather than sourcing that validation from other people. This is really learning to know who you are. I'm really drawn to the fact that she has these butterfly wings, which are a symbol of transformation and growth. Now, she's a mermaid. She's a mermaid with butterfly wings, which I find really curious and interesting. But symb symbology-wise, she is going through, she has been through her metamorphosis. She's come to that place of being able to understand and empathise without absorbing and carrying the weight of everyone else's emotions and experience. This is true self-awareness and understanding and still being empathetic, but recognising the truth of our own emotions and what is ours to resolve and to carry. I think there is this notion upon our spiritual path or upon our life path that you get to a certain point and then there is no problems. You get to a certain point and you're fully healed. Life is a constant state of evolution. There's going to be ups and downs along the way. The world signifies completion of a particular cycle. And with this mermaid here being bound, I'm just being called back to this Queen of Cups. And this feels like a, a level of awakening, completion of a certain phase of self-awareness and awakening you know you've got to a point now where you've really you've really learned what it is that needs your direct attention what needs a response what needs to be reacted to and sometimes when things are removed from our paths with the five of cups here sometimes things are removed from our paths Sometimes that requires a grieving process. Sometimes that requires us to acknowledge how it made us feel. And that level of just acknowledging the experience, really acknowledging, like I said, grieving sometimes, grieving that experience. But in turn, recognising, in time, recognising, and in, in fair and due time, being able to return and to receive the two of cups that are still behind. You know, the wine may have been spilt. Maybe we wanted things to be a certain way. But maybe they're unfolding in a way that is beyond our personal decision. And that doesn't mean that it's no good. It might just be different. For some of you, I'm getting this really overwhelming feeling of silence. And for some of you, it really could be a need to go to a quiet space in order to ground your energy. You know, we've got air energy here with the swords. We've got water energy here with the cups. So there's a lot of thinking, potentially overthinking at times. This could have been a past pattern, especially with the tower. And then this emotional energy, thoughts and emotions that could have been driving our actions, perhaps reactively, and perhaps always anticipating the worst possible outcome. But with this earth energy here, this is that spiritual lesson. It's, it's staying grounded, finding those calming and gentler ways to cope with the situation. It could be meditation. It could be um, mindfulness. It could be walks in nature. It could be focusing on transmuting energy between yourself and the earth. It's so many different things. And I think you were already well on your way to discovering what things work for you. And it's fair and, and right to say what doesn't work for you because... We're all different. We all have different emotional, spiritual needs and ways of receiving, attuning to and transmuting energy or experiences in our lives. But I think what you're seeing here, this particular situation has taught you that you can stay calm around chaos. Particularly if this chaos is due to particular people or other types of people. 
it feels like instead of focusing so much on the disappointment of what has happened, you have now come to this point of awareness that sometimes things aren't going to work out. Sometimes endings will happen. Sometimes we don't get exactly what it is that we were hoping for or wanted. But that doesn't mean we're not going to get something similar or something better or something more aligned for us, more beneficial for us in the long run. I really feel like this has taught you, this situation, whatever it is, has taught you to be more grounded, more patient with yourself, but also with the situation and to see the higher perspective. When we can bring those thoughts and emotions back to a grounded earthly space, it's, it's very earthy energy, just that when we can pull those back in rather than allowing the racing thoughts or emotions to take over and to discern all of our next actions, impulsive or even impatient or panicking or anxious thoughts, racing thoughts, feeling the need to immediately react. And I want to say this could have been triggered by a particular person who kind of pushed and pushed and pushed and did certain things to elicit this response from you. It now feels like you've come to a place of a really deep and mature self-awareness or you're on your way there and you're doing the right things so that this stuff doesn't trigger you the same way anymore. And from that space, you have the ability to create new patterns, to be a more patient observer. The Two of Cups underneath, to have different experiences, to meet it, it, the most important thing, it feels like you are having a different experience of your life because you have the ability to re respond and react differently. And that's taken some work, so you should be really, really proud of yourself. I'm going to get a goddess message for you as well. I was just feeling which one I wanted to do. Let's get a goddess message. Mama Kosha Water. Love this. You know, you've got all of this water energy here and this signification of water energy, this beautiful water goddess here. Water is the nourishing force of all. Our emotions, our emotions can be so powerful and so destructive and I really feel like you are learning how to understand and direct those, but also, especially if you're energy sensitive, how to discern and understand other people's energy and emotions from your own without being driven or led by them, without being uh, overly responsible for what isn't yours to be responsible for. And this is, this is giving you a different sense of, of peace and the ability to be grounded because you're now only responsible for your own. So this is a real sense of Self-mastery here, part one. And it's really powerful. And you've got the 33 there as well, which is a master number. So I will leave this here for you. But I hope this reading assisted you. I hope it was helpful. If you like this reading, please feel free to like, share, subscribe um, or comment. Tell me what you liked or what resonated with you. But I really appreciate you being here and spending your time with me. As always, personal readings are available and my official links are below. And you can check out my Instagram if you'd like to see my latest artwork and the other things that I do. So, sending you all my love and I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi there, part number two. If you were drawn to these cards and the rose quartz today, then this is your reading. As I said before, this is the spiritual lessons we are taking away from a particular experience on your mind. We're going to be using the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. And if you didn't watch the description, just as a reminder, personal readings are available. This is a collective reading, so please take the messages that resonate. But if you'd like something personal, I do offer personal readings, and those are available on the links below. Let's get into your cards. Okay, we've got emotions and intellect in reverse, the reverse, and then shapeshifter. Transform and unveil your gift. 
minutes. Okay. Now with emotion and intellect in the reverse, this is all about the balancing of our emotional and our mental selves. This feels to me like the balance of our emotional who we are, who we feel that we are deep down, and who we believe that we should be in our intellectual self, our, our thoughts, our logic. For some of you, you could have been going through a spiritual awakening, different levels of spiritual awakening, a deepening level of self-awareness or personal growth, changing through a situation. You could have felt and experienced a shift in yourself. For some of you, there could have been this level of trying to rationalise the spiritual experiences that you were having, how that made you feel in the the changing of self, the shifting of your self-identity. And logically trying to explain away some of the experiences that you might have had or guidance that you may have had. You know, it's finding that balance within you of, and, and I genuinely feel like this is a process with any kind of spiritual awareness or the deepening of that process is something that takes time. It takes time to get to know oneself. It takes time to build and believe in our own intuition, in our feedback system. I feel like this experience, whatever it has been for you, has been to help you to develop further belief. No matter how long you've been doing this or whatever, you know, I don't believe in particular stages. I think that's something that humans create to help try and structure things. But realistically, it's different for all of us. So wherever you're at in your journey, I feel like you've been called to believe in some of the deeper spiritual aspects of yourself beyond the intellectual, the logical, the explainable, the empirically, you know, provable. And it's unlocking deeper gifts within you, deeper experiences. And sometimes we doubt them, sometimes we question them. Actually, we can do that for a very long time. And it's all part of developing that belief in our own inner feedback system. And that's equally okay. But with this snake, there's, I'm not sure if you can see in this card, this is the shapeshifter card. There is a really faint snake that's kind of drawn in over here. It feels like you have shed a skin been through a process of your own transformation and now you're stepping into a new phase and that might feel a little bit daunting you know we can feel a little bit daunting believing in something new or realizing that especially if you are you like things to be proven before you believe in them and then there could also be worry about what other people think which is quite normal um I really feel like this is you sort of coming to that place of like, okay, there, there is definitely stuff happening, going on that I can't deny to myself. Even if it is just to myself, I, I, I'm I honouring this, I'm recognising this. And it's like you've come to that place. Let's get some tarot for you though. Let's get some more messages. This is the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. number two please okay and we'll get the bottom of the deck strength temperance and the high priestess okay you've got a lot of major arcana here uh the six of swords and the world and you've got the King of Pentacles that flew out on his side. Now, I don't do this deck in the reverse, but we will honour the way he has come out. Okay. You could have found a different kind of faith 
through a difficult or challenging experience. Something that really helped you to tap in, to tune in to your own intuition, to your spiritual self, or it could even be a particular group of spiritual people or practices. For some of you, it could also be religious. Um, but it feels like this has helped you through a difficult situation. You were finding new levels of strength within you. And actually, this experience, these experiences, the shift that has occurred within you now, you actually feel like, do you know what? It's time to leave some stuff behind me. You could feel like one phase of your life is completed. You know, I, I don't like to equate life to a computer game, but I think that concept of, of levelling up, um, you know, taking things, you, you reach a point of completion of one level of your life and then it's like, okay, next phase, next chapter. The world in the Six of Swords means the end of something that you are now ready to move beyond. Or for some of you, there was some kind of ending, uh, somebody walking away from you or a particular energy. It could have been a career change, a major career change for some of you, and it could have been redundancy. Uh, this wasn't something that you chose, uh, What it is what I'm getting most of all. It's almost like somebody turned their back on you and something left your life. And for a long time, you could have really been wondering why on earth this happened. And there could have been this level of self-doubt. There might still be, in some ways, this level of self-doubt. But through this situation, through this experience, you have come to this realisation of deeper gifts, of greater energy, of your own ability. No, a sense of higher purpose through your healing and growth. This is a sense of higher purpose through your healing and growth that whatever this was, for some of you, it could have been some kind of judgment. It could have been some sort of letter, some sort of legal matter. This was the end of a chapter. For some of you, actually, you could have worked in a legal context and now you've decided to walk away from that. Um, something legal or something that required a lot of very important written wording I'm guessing with this emotion intellect again and it's almost like these experiences that you've had mean that you now see life in in a different way and you can't just switch that off within yourself which could feel really quite out of your comfort zone here with the king of pentacles who's not fully in the upright I feel like you're getting a new level of inner and spiritual strength and awareness, recognising this high priestess energy within, the ability to have deeper spiritual meaning and connection and experience with all aspects of yourself in relation to your life. And that does mean that maybe you walked away from some things or maybe some things walked away from you. And you might not fully understand now, right now, how this energy grounds into your world, how, what it means. If you, for some of you, you could be doubting, oh, okay, I'm getting a really strong masculine energy here now that doesn't mean gender. Um, but that strong masculine energy of having to show up in our lives, in our worlds in a certain way, and almost having to have that emotional off switch in order to appear a certain way, to to have a certain type of strength or power or commanding presence within a particular situation. And some of these spiritual experiences, this healing experience, let's just call it a healing experience, something that you've healed through, grown through, could have softened some of that front. And you're worried people aren't going to respect you anymore, but you've developed a different kind of strength. I love that we have the Ten of Cups underneath. Um, you've developed a different kind of strength. She's this beautiful, she actually looks like the Queen of Cups that's in this deck. And there she is, sat on the back of this lion, taming him. It takes a, it takes a different kind of strength to be able to calm and understand and work with those inner chaotic energies. 
um, the beast within, the beast without of ourselves, you know, everything the inside and the outside. I feel like you think that some of these changes mean that you have to change in other areas of your life. And sometimes that is. Sometimes we get to a point where we re have a deeper realisation of self that then conflicts with um, some of the values or some of the ways in which we're showing up in the world. But I'm actually really getting that you're going to be finding new ways. And the, this is a process of integration, of balancing, of coming together. There is a, a level of coexistence here, of marrying this, this king of pentacles completely in control, in charge of his material reality, secure, grounded, uh, abundant, maybe has the good career or just feels settled in their choice of career with the high, the high priestess. You know, this deep spiritual wisdom, this, this true awareness. Sorry, guys, my phone rang and cut off the reading. Okay, where were we? There is a sense of marrying these two different aspects of yourself and recognising that actually they are both parts of yourself. You are allowed to be spiritual and have spiritual beliefs um, and also have a career. And for some of you, it might be, you might feel time to move in a different direction. And that could feel like it's pulling away from your sense of self, stability, security, the, the entire material world that you've created. But this Ten of Cups hiding underneath the strength, it almost feels like creating a new sense of, of that foundation, a new sense of what makes you feel in that King of Pentacles energy, where things are grounded, where things do feel safe and stable. But it's also more integrated with all of this deeper awareness of who you are. I'm definitely seeing for some of you, there, there could have been some big endings that, that triggered this awakening. And for others of you, these awakenings could choose you to walk away from particular types of people, circles of friends, groups of people, even jobs in some cases, if it suddenly then misaligns with your values. And it's important to say that when you're moving away from something, you're moving towards something new. And this world, this is the end of one cycle and the beginning of another. So it's almost trying to say with the strength to have courage, have faith, because there is new coming. And it's like you're going through this process of learning to shed these layers of skin, these levels of self that you've kind of outgrown. And maybe there are certain parts of your life now that just don't feel like they fit anymore. And it's okay to recognise that these processes do take time. And for some of you, there could be some sort of contract that needs to be gone over, thing that needs to be read through. I'm getting that something you may need to release yourself from. So do take, do take that as it resonates for you. But ultimately... This feels like you coming to a deeper level of self-understanding, spiritual understanding of all that you are and the greater depths of who you are. And for some of you, this could have felt really disconcerting because it could have questioned your beliefs. It could have called into question some of those deepest held beliefs that you have about yourself or had about yourselves or things that you were taught. You know, maybe you were raised in a particular way or your parents had particular beliefs on things and now things are being questioned and you can, it, it takes time to come to that inner truth within you of what you think, of what you feel, of what you believe rather than just what you've been told or, or taught growing up. But this is like a powerful level up, Paul, too really coming to a deeper understanding of spiritual and emotional self on a, on a higher level and how this healing journey 
is helping you to move forwards. Recognising the importance of these steps along your path. Yeah, I like this. Let's get a goddess card for you. No, okay, I'm being told no. They want a gods and titan card for you. That's interesting because I was feeling a lot of masculine energy coming through. Ease of support. I love this. This is turning to those sources of support around you. Finding your tribe. Finding like-minded people. Now this could be difficult if some of this feels really new or you're having new ideas, experiences, thoughts. You're deciding that you want to do new things or to meet new people. And again, you could have been doing this for years. You could be very spiritually evolved and you've just reached a next level. And you're just deciding, OK, you know, maybe there is something I need some support with. Maybe I do need to work with somebody. Maybe I am ready for a new level of learning, a new level of experience within myself. Maybe I need some help with this. So and I'm getting to being really guided to say there's nothing to be ashamed of in that. It's healthy to seek support from those around us. It doesn't mean that you are any less for needing or having asked for that support. So please don't lose, please don't feel that, that asking for help from others is somehow losing you ground. Because there is this energy of, of being vehemently independent. So perhaps this is developing a deeper level of interdependency with all aspects of yourself and also with other people around you that can provide you with support. Even if that's just to realise that you're not on your own sometime. Okay, pile number two, I'm going to leave this here for you. I hope this helped with some guidance on how this experience is, um, you know, what the spiritual lesson is right now for you or about this particular experience. I really hope this, this helps. If you feel that way, then please feel free to like, share, subscribe. I do offer personal readings. I'm sorry that your reading was interrupted, but I hope it was okay and I hope you enjoyed it. And just thank you for being here. So sending you all my love and I'll see you again really, really soon. Take care. Hi there, pile number three. If you were drawn to this pile, then this is your reading. You were called to the Carnelian today. Now, as you're aware, whether you saw the description and the introduction or not, the theme of this reading is the spiritual guidance or lesson from a particular experience on your mind. So we're going to be getting a lot of different messages and maybe all of these will resonate with you. Perhaps some of them won't. So please only take what resonates. If you'd like a completely personal reading, I do offer those and they're available in the links in the description box below on my website and Etsy, but nowhere else. So please be mindful of scammers and impersonators. Let's get into it. Let's get these. I'm going to be using the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot as well today. OK, so we've got the three of air in the reverse and guardian angel. You are not alone. OK. Wow, the immediate message that I got is, do you feel like there are some sort of secrets that you were being, there could have been some sort of secret that came to light that was being held from you? Something that you weren't expecting. You might have suddenly become aware of something that you were not expecting. And it could have left you feeling really isolated or it could have just made you question an awful lot of things. And you're not entirely sure right, right now how this is all going to play out in your life. But it's almost like the falling of a facade. There is some sort of facade or something that is dropped. I'm being really strongly guided to feathers. Um, I'm noticing the black wings here on um, this person and also the, the white feather here, obviously. This one, guardian angel, you are not alone. I think this is calling you to see beyond the initial disappointment or upset of a particular situation. For some of you, I almost feel like you, 
the message that I'm getting now, this one is quite specific. We might have more general messages coming through, but um, this really feels like you might have had an intuition, a thought or feeling about somebody or a particular situation. And you really felt like it was, there was something afoot. There was maybe something didn't feel right, but you didn't, it was almost like you didn't trust yourself. Or maybe you didn't, maybe you just kind of talked yourself out of something. You wanted to see the good in somebody or a situation. You wanted to believe in somebody or a certain situation. And you really, it was just you wanted to see the good. You wanted to trust and have faith in somebody. This could have been romantic. It could have been professional. For some of you, I'm always seeing like a mentor position, somebody that you put your trust into and they could have let you down in some way. Um, or the experience could have really let you, left you feeling let down. Um, there is purpose beyond this situation is what's coming through. The situation may have shaken you up a bit. It may have made you question or doubt your own faith, your own ability to discern, because this one thinks it talks of learning and education. You might think and be re being really hard on yourself now, pile number three, and asking yourself, why? Why didn't I see this coming? Why didn't I listen to that person or to myself? How did I let this happen? And the reality is, there are people, we will encounter people in all aspects, in all situations in life. A trusting person can, so, sometimes we're misled, but sometimes that's part of the process. Sometimes, it, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt because I'm really guessing that you could have been really hurt, but you're blaming yourself rather than recognizing that this person was deceptive. I feel like you almost feel like you should have done better, known better. And you're being really hard on yourself. And I'm actually getting, it's, oh my gosh, it's that quote. Um, anger is, or hatred, or whatever, it, I can't remember. I'm sort of ad-libbing here. Um, holding on to anger is like drink or resentment. It's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You are holding on to something and it could have been making you feel really ill. It could have been making you feel really down, doubting yourself. And I feel like you were completely taking the blame for a situation with actually somebody else. Um, it, it's just not all your fault is what I'm getting here. This was not all your fault, pile number three. I feel like some of you need to hear that. Uh, you could have... You could have isolated yourself from people fearing that you can't trust anybody. And if you feel that way, I'm so sorry, pile number three, because it's not, that's not a nice place to be in. And for some of you, you could feel like you should have been able to, to recognise this because you've been here before, but there is so much higher purpose to this situation. You're not meant to be beating yourself up. You know, this could have been a really big and quite challenging life lesson for you, but there is a higher perspective, something coming in. You have the key to unlock, to free yourself. You know, sometimes we don't, we doubt our own power, our own ability to heal, but there is, there is some sort of key here, something that it may take time, but I'm hoping we're going to get some really clear messages on the specifics of this need for self-forgiveness and, and it's almost like self-redemption, like this isn't your fault or this wasn't all your fault. And I feel like you've taken 100% of the responsibility or blame for a situation where actually that's not, that's not where it's at. Please. 
Okay. Have you got some nice car too? I want to get a clarification on this six of cups, please. That's a lot of cards. I can't take all of those. Okay. I'm going to work out how I can put these all in so that we can see them all. Hopefully you can see them all. Just Let's just try and squeeze things up just a little bit. Okay, first row of cards, the Star, the Six of Cups, and the Queen of Swords. Now, there could have been a lot of hope on something, somebody, a redo of something from the past. I'm getting that somebody could have come back into your life. This will be for some of you, not all of you. Somebody could have come back into your life, and it could have felt destined with this star here. It could have felt like this it must be, this must be meant to be really being drawn to the fact that this mermaid's tail is transparent for some reason and for some of you I don't think that you've had absolute transparency from somebody I feel like there could have been a lot that wasn't said and you got half of a story it's also the reminder that you're only half of a dynamic now, what we're working towards is this Queen of Swords energy. Now, I think the scene, the Queen of Swords gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes. You know, she's quite sad in this card. She has these tears, but she also looks quite peaceful and serene. And this is being able to make difficult decisions sometimes. Something or some kind of energy could have returned to your life. And it could have been something that you really were hoping for. And what I'm guessing is that things may not have gone the way you'd hoped. I think they might have gone the way you feared. And it was almost like at the same time you were kind of trying to talk yourself around. Thinking that this time it might be different. Maybe the situation or maybe it doesn't have to be the same person. But it's like a redo of similar energy. Maybe this time it will be different. Maybe this time things will work out differently. I'm not saying that you in any which way caused this. But there could have been an element of hanging on to these thoughts and fears of the past. Having doubts and fears and insecurities. Somewhere between moving away. I feel like this is your almost your current energy. You could have a difficult decision to make right now, part number three, or not even a difficult decision, but I feel like you're being offered a decision to. I'm actually guessing. Yes, you have a decision to make, but I see your success either way. Now, you've got a decision to make about which direction you want to take here with the two of wands. But ultimately, it's going to lead you towards your success, your victory here with the chariot. But what you're being asked to do with this Four of Pentacles and the Five of Cups is to stop looking at the past. You have a dream. And this dream could be the do-over of a kind of energy. I feel like you could have been hoping, wishing, praying for something. And something came back into your life. Somebody came back into your life that was not the full dream but it was something that came back and the reason this came back the spiritual lesson here for you lesson doesn't even feel like the, the right word it was it was an opportunity for you to for, for growth again I don't want that to sound trite because I know that you've you've been through it here um it was the ability to let go of something from the past and sometimes these things have to be brought to our focus, brought to our awareness for us to even realise we're still doing them or believing them or thinking about them in a particular way. You could have really wanted a loving relationship perhaps or this dream job, but still expecting on one level, oh, but I'm not going to get it. They're going to cheat. They're going to run away with somebody else or they'll choose somebody else over me because that's what always happens. That's what has always happened. Things never work out for me. This Queen of Swords is 
triggering this level of discernment. There is a there is a dawning realization here of the part that you played and the parts that others played in situations within your life. And I think that is when you begin to let go of whatever it is that you've been holding on to. This it's almost like your deepest fears manifested. And it could be because you were you were worrying all the time. Is this going to happen? Is this person going to do this? This seems too good to be true. Oh, well, that person did this and so maybe they'll do this. You know, th this five of cups is saying that when you and the four of pentacles, you're going to come to this point when you're ready to let go of this past or even just to, I don't want to say let go, like suddenly it doesn't affect you anymore, but suddenly it's not going to have the same impact on you. This is you really learning to trust yourself and your judgment with this Queen of Swords. And realising that sometimes we have no control over how people treat us. It's not that we asked for it. It's not that we wanted it. You might have believed in very good faith that somebody was who they said they were. And you really wanted that to work. And that person, unfortunately, let you down. They didn't fulfil your expectations of them. And also you might have gotten a version of them that really wasn't the truth and that could have really hurt you and made you doubt your judgment. And again, this doesn't have to be romantic because for some of you, I feel like somebody could have offered you something, a job role, an opportunity. It could have been a business partner and they just didn't see this through. They did not fulfill their end of the bargain. And you blamed yourself. But what I'm seeing here is there is going to be a process. You could be in the middle of this process. You could be coming out of this process at the end of this process of really realizing that there is something more for you here with the star and the six of cups. And that is going to lead you towards this victory, this success, this fulfillment. You choosing the path that you want and you having the things that you want. And yes, this journey could have made you feel really alone at times. Um, like I said, you could be at any different stage of this. And I'm really sorry if you're feeling alone right now. But there is change coming. This process was not to hurt you, but to help you to realise the two of cups that are left. Whatever this may be for you, your worth, your value, your inherent qualities, abilities, the beautiful experiences that you were still yet to have and the connections you were still yet to make, the success and the victories you were still yet to achieve. That is all still there. You know, this wine is spilt, that is gone, and that will require a process of grieving, of letting go, of releasing. That takes as long as it takes. We would love to be able to say, it'll take five months, three months, a week, you know, It'll be different for every possible situation. Sometimes we have to have a fresh perspective on things. But there's two of ones. And, you know, this star, there is going to be this process of healing. I really feel with this guardian angel card here, you know, call upon your God's guides, guardians, angels, ancestors, whoever it is that you commune with, identify with, believe in, um, call for them, ask for their assistance, ask for, ask to see what it is that you need in order to go through this healing process. I'm going to get the bottom of the deck because I didn't do that for you. Yeah, the page of pentacles. Now, you could receive some sort of message out of somewhere that really kickstarts this healing process, this moving on process. Because I would say, if you've been going through a healing process, the Two of Swords and the Chariot is you moving on. You know, not obsessing about the past anymore, not holding on to the, the weight of past experiences and deciding to move on. Look at her, she's like, I'm getting the flock out of here. Um, you know, this is, this is you being ready to move on, ready to move towards something new 
that's the important takeaway here. You are ready to move towards something new. He's holding the world in his hand. This is the end of a difficult cycle, a potentially difficult chapter. And with the star, there is another dream coming. There is something deeper coming to the surface now. New possibilities, new opportunities that you might not have had. Had this situation held you there? Maybe there was a lot about it that was really attractive, but you decided actually, no, at some point there was some sort of awareness, realisation, and you were like, no, I, I am, I deserve better than this, or I can do better than this, or I need more than this, or this really isn't working for me anymore. Yeah, the Four of Cups. You're deciding to do things for you now. You're deciding to do things for you now. You know, for some of you, this page of pentacles and this four of cups, somebody could come forwards and try to offer you something, especially with this six of cups for somebody from the past. This might have already happened and this could have triggered these emotions. Just because somebody offers you something, you are not obligated to accept it. You are free to make the decisions of your choosing. Sometimes we are offered something that actually we then start talking ourselves out of because of the past and because of the fear of things going the same way with this Four of Pentacles and the Five of Cups. But whichever the situation, understand that you have come a long way in learning how to discern what feels right for you and you don't beat yourself up because sometimes we have to go through certain experiences and there's no two ways around that. That's my personal belief. You don't have to take that, but it kind of gets us to where we want to go. Sometimes we think we really, really want something a certain way. And then we have an experience of it and it's just like, oh no, that was not it. That was not what I wanted. And at that point we go, okay, so if it's not that, then what is it? And actually that's where we gain our clarity. And sometimes it's only through the experience of what we don't want that we really realise what it is that we do want. So, part number three, I would say try and take the lessons of this situation as their own blessing, even if it resulted in disappointment. There is something new. There is a new dream, a new horizon, a new adventure and a new victory awaiting. But you don't have to settle for anything that isn't in line with that vision that you have or what feels right to you. Let's get a goddess message for you. I know which one I'm feeling is going to come out, if, if I'm right. There's a card in here that's Freya, Radical Acceptance. Well, oh my gosh, that's so strange. Um, because that is the exact card that came out for part number one. That's crazy. Now, there isn't masses of crossover. However, there might be messages for you in part number one as well. Fascinatingly, this card is all about, sorry, I'm, I'm still trying to get over the fact that it came out twice. <laughs> um, fascinatingly, this is all about the ability to transform and the healing energies of water. You know, this star card, this is all about the healing energies of water. Um, it's very linked to a, Aquarius energy. There is a transformation, in a process involved here that you have already been going through. And maybe you don't see your own progress or your own process, or perhaps you just doubt yourselves in some ways. Perhaps you doubt your strength. Perhaps you think that your emotions have led you to, or, or maybe make you weak somehow. But I'm really strongly getting that, you know, that, being really drawn to the shade of blue 
of this Queen of Swords eyes and the blue of both of the eyes of these cards. The Queen of Swords has to be discerning and know her mind because she understands her emotions, her, the depth of her emotional self, what she needs and what she cannot tolerate. And it takes a different kind of self-love to be able to put those boundaries in place to protect ourselves and be strong. And that is the gentle strength of water that is emotionally led, but also uses wise discernment. Wow. I'm going to leave this here for you, part number three. I hope this reading assisted you. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, subscribe. Um, as a reminder, I do have personal readings available, but thank you for being here. Just, I really appreciate it and I love doing these readings and I will see you again soon. All right. Lots of love. Take care.